I remembered almost just after I finished, like, editing the last part or two, that apparently, you know how, you know how I found it weird that they say it's only been a hundred years since New Hyrule stopped being inhabited? Apparently, that's a mistranslation. Japanese doesn't have plurals. Like, it has plurals, but it doesn't indicate them for some stupid reason. Not sure how you're supposed to figure out what's a plural if you're, like, talking about something and you can't see what is being talked about, but whatever. So, it's not actually a hundred years after Ocarina of Time. They just mistranslated that, and I'm guessing they didn't actually fix it for the HD version. Also, I went into the wrong door there because it looked a little too similar to another door, and I got lost. It's pretty easy to get lost in this place because they arbitrarily rob you of your mini-map, and they don't even give you a map of your own. This is part of the reason that I don't call Ganon's Tower a real dungeon. Not only does it have no compass, but it has no map either. So it just artificially tries to make you get lost in it. Did I just get damage with more than one heart of damage? You don't do that. What was this, a ROM hack? Normally when enemies deal that much damage to you, it makes you think that you should have a defensive upgrade. Why are there no extra tunics in this game? Collecting all of those dark nut bracelet things that I forget the name of, they give you this great spin attack, which is more than which is more than worth it for cheesing that boss alone. Honestly, I don't really use it all that much because not only does it drain your magic, but it takes forever to charge up. It's not like you can just rotate the analog stick to make it happen. So it's kind of useless. And all the time that you spent charging it up, like, you could have dealt a lot more damage with regular spin attacks over and over again. So it's not even really useful in bosses. And another thing, well, well it is really, really useful in the boss against the big Poe, which I'm, I'm sure I showed off. But, yeah. I also don't see the point, like, I hate how the great spin attack forces you to move around against your will, rather than letting you just stop. So, that's another thing. Like, it's it's cool, but... And I also don't like how Link gets dizzy and stands still, helpless, for a couple seconds after finishing it. So, all in all, the drawbacks vastly outweigh the... It's not really worth it. Anyways... You know how to get through this maze because you you pay attention to where the the hit the hilt of the sword is pointing after it falls down. And if it's pointing towards a certain door, you go towards that door. Again, he dealt more than a heart of health. And it's completely luck based whether you manage to hit the real one or not. There's no way to tell which one's real. So, it's not really a fair challenge. I kind of feel sorry for speedrunners in this situation. Although, I say that, but... Well, if you memorize the way through this place, then you could just go through all of the doors and you'll be fine. Like, you don't actually need to defeat Ganon at all. In order to... Because the game doesn't check to see if you defeated Phantom Ganon before letting you progress to the next part of this repetitive maze. This is basically just padding. It's not really that exciting, to be honest. And it seems to go on forever, too. Like, there's no real feeling of progress. Especially since, again, you don't have a map. Remember that first cutscene? Well, not the first cutscene, but the one where Tetra was kidnapped by a bird? Well, apparently, the thing is that that boulder that the pirates fire after the bird, if you look through a telescope on top of Ariel's lookout after that boulder gets fired, you'll actually be able to see the boulder in the distance. You'll have to zoom in with the telescope, in order to see it, because otherwise it's really small and pixelated. 
Like it's also it's also weird because you like you think it would be a pre-rendered, a pre-rendered thing, not something that causes a uh, actual boulder to appear in the actual overworld. But yeah, there's there's really nothing interesting about this part of the dungeon. His boss theme is cool, but it is actually possible to clip out of bounds and skip beating Phantom again entirely. But it's really hard to do, and it takes longer than just doing it normally. And if you know what doors to go through in the maze, you could just get you could get through it a lot faster. Basically, you go down, left, ahead, left, right, ahead. That's the way through the maze. And I play this game a lot, but I've never really memorized the maze. Of course, that's because I've only really played through the entire game, like, a few times. Most of the time that I've played this game, it's just been the Triforce quest. And... Now that you've gotten the light arrows, like, the light arrows are actually pretty cool because they can one-shot everything. And you, you can even kill the dark nuts with one light arrow. In fact, you can kill two dark nuts in a row with one light arrow. I wonder if the light arrows can one-shot bosses. I never really tried that. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're specifically programmed to not let you do that. I don't know, because with all the codes that I've used for this game, I've never actually tested that out, I think. In the room with the door that you destroy by beating the boss rush, you can actually click through it by doing a jump off basically the highest incline in the room. And you fly over to the top of the door frame with the Deku Leaf, the, the left door. And you face left, tap left in first person view, place a bomb, side hop, and use a Deku Leaf to grab back onto the wall. Don't press left too early or you won't go out of bounds. You can fly behind the door out of bounds. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Like, there's a lot of clipping through walls that you can do in this game to make it easier to skip stuff. It's not actually possible to skip defeating these enemies, like the game completely forces you to fight all of them or the door ahead won't open. But there's lots of magic to go around, so you can't actually get away with yeah, like just killing all of them with ice with the light arrows and just getting a power rush. You don't need to worry about not having any magic for the light arrows which you'll need to defeat the bosses after this. So that's good. And the magic containers are actually brown. They were green in Ocarina of Time, and I prefer that because the magic meter is green, I associate it with the color green, and, like, they had the good sense to make them green in Link to the Past. I don't know. In the HD version, you can put the minimap on the gamepad, and it's harder to keep track of a gamepad map than it is to keep track of a minimap that's on the corner of the same screen you're playing on. Because you need to pause to look down at the gamepad anyways. You can't just glance at it while you're still playing the game. You can also see tinkle bottle messages on the gamepad. So there's that. The HD version has settings for the Miiverse tinkle letters, like you can choose to not allow tinkle letters with spoilers, not allow tinkle letters at all, or allow them for friends only. How do they check what's a spoiler so they can censor it for you? I don't know. I don't think they would do that anymore since they stopped supporting the Wii U because it flopped. The HD version also starts you out with the 500 rupee wallet, which is good. Better than 99 rupees, like an Ocarina of Time. And the game capitalizes your name if it's a lowercase word and the first word in a sentence. So, that's good that they actually make that grammar check. At least in the HD version, I don't know if it does it in the original. After this, we come to a, a very... like, ominous cutscene. Why is he walking like that? Like, is he... is he tired? 
And like, it takes such a long time to actually get to the dialogue. And this is pretty creepy. Like, like, like Ganon is literally watching Zelda as she sleeps. What does he even have to gain out of that? Did he, did he put her under a sleeping spell? And if so, why didn't he make that sleeping spell permanent so that she'd never be able to bother him? And why didn't he cast that spell on Link? This was never mentioned again. I mean, seriously, in what other game has Ganon been able to see people's dreams? And again, why is he looking into her dreams? Is he that bored? This is a really good point that he brings up. He's saying some pretty generic villain things. Does a pretty good, like, poetic metaphor thing. Exactly! Exactly! He's right! He's completely right! They flooded Hyrule, and we're expected to side with them? I mean, how many people died? Was it a, like, Noah's Ark situation where they only allowed the people that they liked enough to go to the tops of the mountains to live there as islands? Like, like, did- how many people died from the gods flooding Hyrule just to deal with Ganon taking over. Like, did they really have to flood Hyrule? I mean, they should have known that the possessor of the Triforce of Power would not be stopped by that. If Valu himself said that you can't stop Ganon with wrath and fire, so why did they think water would work? Why didn't they just imprison him in a crystal? The gods of Hyrule are really stupid. And they thought that was, like, going to help. But anyways, this is easily the worst boss in the game. I mean, I had a lot of good luck with it in this playthrough, but it's really unfun and... I don't really understand why they thought it was a good idea. I mean, right off the bat, they force you to use the unreliable boomerang. So that's annoying right away. Why do you have to hit the ropes multiple times in order to cut them? That seems unnecessary. And it moves around so fast, and you're forced to aim in first person view. Why can't you target the blue sphere? Like, I already said before that the bow aiming controls are shit. They're so sensitive, like you move so far in any direction. How are you expected to reliably aim for the blue sphere in first person mode? Why can't you just L target the thing that you're trying to attack. By the way, I'm not sure why I'm not being shown the health bar for this boss since I have the hero's charm on. Like, that just, that just seems kind of arbitrary. I don't really like the theme that plays here. Like, it's okay, but not really a boss. But yeah. He moves so fast, he spins around so fast, and you're expected to actually hit it with your light arrows. Like, really? So, I don't really see why they thought this was a very good idea. There are a lot of glitches in this game that I haven't really talked about much yet. And using those glitches can actually allow you to skip a lot of the game. For example, you can skip a lot of Forsaken Fortress by backflipping and holding up on the way to the first searchlight. So you grab onto a window on your way down. And then you climb up, and the only mandatory searchlight on the southwest corner of the dungeon will be something you can disable. I never knew that! Like, I never knew that there was only one searchlight in Forsaken Fortress that you had to disable. Like, I always just assumed that you needed to disable all of them. Are you supposed to know that? Like, they just mislead you and paddle a dungeon that make you think you have to destroy all of them. Like, I learned a lot of stuff about speedrunning this game from watching Swordless Link's playthrough of the game, which was pretty cool. I would never speedrun anything myself because it sounds really annoying. Because, like, if you make a single mistake in a speedrun, then you might as well quit and do everything over again. Why would you enjoy that kind of pressure? A 
I really like how they play the the victory music and then make it all all surreal and depressing. Like that's really creative. What's also creative is this boss fight because like you can look in the you can look in the water and see the reflection of the boss so you know exactly where to go. I don't like how they have keys in the boss fight though. Why are there regular enemies in a boss fight? Especially since you can L target them instead of the boss, and they're like a huge distraction. But yeah, this is actually a pretty well designed boss. I wish they had, like, removed the first phase entirely and just, like, I don't know, just scrapped it. Like, normally, I mean, like, the fire dungeon boss had two phases. Why can't this boss have two phases? I like how they actually have, like, multiple different themes for Puppet Gin. I think I like this, this theme a lot more. It's weird, like, Ganon physically transformed into Puppet Ganon. But when you actually beat Puppet Ganon, he acts as if you never beat him at all. So it's really weird. He acts as if he sent a creation of his after you because in the cutscene after this he's just standing around as if you never even so much as damaged him there are ways to deal with this boss like you can explode a bomb so you make him stop so it's actually fair but I don't think he's stopped for quite long enough so by the time that you try to hit him you'll barely have enough time to do it I've heard you can also make him stop with bait. So, I think that continues the Zelda tradition of making Ganon have hilarious weaknesses. Because, like, in Link to the Past, it was... Like, you could reflect a Ganon's energy balls back with the bug you net. And, like, you can use the empty bottle to reflect the, the Phantom Ganon energy balls. I think Ocarina of Time has that kind of thing too. It is technically possible to skip Puppet Ganon by zombie hovering, but because you can't use a Tingle Tuner in here, you'll need to rely on hearts dropped randomly from blown up keys and hope they save you. Not to mention that even with all that working out, it still takes forever to get all the way up there. So it's really not worth it. But yeah, that's going to be the end of this part, because it's going to take a while to defeat the next boss and watch all the credits. So I split this up into two videos, basically.